Hi guys, how are you? I am Dr. Prakasam. I go by Dr. P or Prakash. I am so sorry I am not there today, but I'll be as nice as possible on the video. And uh, even though I don't look that good and my accent is not good, I hope uh, it'll be fun. Please don't go to sleep because I'm not there. All right. I'm going to give you an overview of pediatric diabetes management in general and uh, hospital-based approach in particular. Um, I'll try to be as sensitive as possible uh, uh, speaking to a blank screen over here. Basically, many of you know that we run one of the biggest pediatric diabetes programs in the country and uh, certainly one of the largest uh, um, services from an extended standpoint from research to uh, inpatient management. We get about 100 to 150 new children each year into Sutter Memorial and Sutter General E through the ER or direct admissions and we only have about 5% readmission rate. So that tells that all of us seem to be doing a fairly good job in managing these children. With that in mind, let me give you an overview and then we'll hone in a little bit more on management of children while they come to your uh, ER. Couple of uh, take home points. The access to physicians for existing patients is extremely easy for our patients. They all of, all of them have pager numbers of our service and they don't talk through answering service, they directly page us. So the access is really easy and same should be available when you guys have questions. There are only two things they come to the ER with. One is if they are not able to hold fluids either in hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia or if they are in full-blown diabetic ketoacidosis. So that's something we will talk a little bit in detail. So now going through the slides, this is just to give you an overview. Let's start with a joke. Uh, in the beginning of God, uh, in the beginning, God populated America with broccoli and cauliflower and spinach, green and yellow and red vegetables of all kind. So man and woman would live long and healthy lives. All right, story will continue later on. <clears throat> what do we need? Advancement in management, what we do beyond childhood and what we do as a team, all of us put together. Going on to the story, then using God's bountiful gifts, Saturn created ice cream and donuts and Saturn said, you want chocolate with that? And man said, yes. And woman said, I'll have another with sprinklings and lo, they gained 10 pounds. So a lot of things have changed in management of diabetes now from going from needle to syringe with urine dipsticks to uh, advancements. Now we have newer insulins which work faster and we can modulate the way they work because they are recombinant insulins. We have pen devices where they can dial and give the shots. In pediatrics, we have half unit pens available. The lancing devices, which we uh, pierce to uh, get the blood out, uh, can come in different depths. So little kids can have one with um, a finer needle. Insulin pumps, which deliver insulin based on what we give them as information in advance. Um, glucose sensors which measures blood sugars on a continual basis and displays it on the screen so patients can do pa pattern management rather than individual number management. We have uh, medications especially for um, type 2 diabetes which we are starting to see in pediatrics and the numbers are increasing. Just to put it in perspective we have about 1300 children with type 1 diabetes in our practice meaning we are about 100 children with type 2 at this point of time. Ten years ago um, we had like two kids with type 2. Um, and then uh, we sometimes use medications like um, GLP analogs, you would have heard about Baita. We have something similar for type 1 called Simlin, S-Y-M-L-I-N. And there are other alternative approaches which are social work input, um, involvement of our behavioral therapist, so on and so forth. And the future diabetic options are changing a lot as well. This is not the time period to discuss. We'll do it some other time, okay? All right. And God created healthy full yogurt and women might keep, uh, so that women might keep the figure that man found so fair. And Saturn brought forth white flour from the wheat and sugar from the cane and combined them. And women went from size two to size six. So God said, try my fresh green salad and Saturn presented dressing and garlic toast on the side. 
and man and woman unfastened their belts following their past. Okay, this is an old man, he's 91 years old, the story was on New York Times and he's on an insulin pump, he has had diabetes for more than 50 years and he is totally healthy. One thing we need to understand is unlike type 2 where uh, patients sometimes think it's a lighter diabetes, usually with type 1 people take it more seriously because if they don't take it seriously they'll hand, land up in the hospital with diabetic ketoacidosis. The chances are if they work closely with the team they should live a happy life without any problems and they should be able to do everything. We have no restriction on our children what they can do. In fact, uh, I have a child in my practice who just got his pilot's license to fly. So, uh, no restrictions. Their life is to be uh, led as they imagined before they had diabetes. Okay, this is what I was talking to you about glucose sensor reading. As time goes by, you're going to see more and more children uh, using glucose sensors. I, to identify glucose sensor as it stands today, instead of seeing one site with blood sugar monitoring you will be seeing uh, two um, two sites with blood sugar monitoring um, let's stop it at this time <laughs> nine minutes or is it ten minutes 